It's taken a long time for Renault to deliver a proper follow-up to its Zoe EV, but the Megane Tech Electric was worth the wait. Family hatch segment EVs often tend to be either rather boring or ever so slightly weird, but this one's stylish and engaging. A new kind of Renault for a very different era. Who would have forecast back in 2012 when Renault launched its little Zoe full EV that it would be a full decade before we saw another mainstream Renault passenger car EV in our showrooms? Yet that's what's happened as the brand overstretched itself and has been overtaken by nearly all its volume rivals in the electric vehicle segment. But the fight back starts here with this car, the Megane E-Tech Electric. It sits on the same CMF EV platform used by the larger Nissan Ariya, and it should reach a wider audience, which the brand hopes is now ready for a slightly bigger run out of this sort. Thanks to the success of the Zoe Super Mini, one in every five cars the company sells in Europe is now electric, but this one's very different. The first in the new generation of full battery Renaults, its development rushed through by the brand's ambitious CEO, Luca De Mio, who likes to describe this as the GTI of EVs, and that's a reference to the sporty looks. The marketeers like to call it a child of revolution, sophisticated in concept with its new CMF EV platform and almost impossibly thin battery, and fabricated in Electricity, the Renault Group's new industrial hub. Launched here in 2022, it aims to rejuvenate its makers' flagging fortunes and disrupt the sometimes rather dull family hatch sector of the EV market, which, if this Megane is as good as it looks, might just happen. But is it? Or to find out, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the Car and Driving Road Test. If, as someone who quite likes their driving, you've been forced reluctantly into the EV era, you might have cautiously optimistic expectations here. Renaults of this size that look this sporty have usually turned out to be tarmac tearaways. but they've always been distinctly analog inside, while this car, in contrast, delivers the digital age to your fingertips as soon as you seat yourself behind this strangely shaped wheel and Renault's new logo appears in the central screen. That this Megane is ready will then be evidenced by a little blue icon saying so in the instrument screen's left-hand dial when you press this rather hidden little black starter button. But ready for what? Let's find out. Renault promises that this car's sporty looks will translate into a sporty drive, and there's lots about the design and the engineering of this model to suggest that, that might actually translate into reality on the tarmac. Uh, the new power steering system has a super sharp 12 to 1 ratio, and there's an uber thin 60 kilowatt hour battery, which, along with a particularly light electric motor, allows this Renault to save about 100 kilos in weight over its rivals and can be mounted even lower in the chassis than would normally be possible on an EV. That platform is the Nissan Renault Alliance Group's stiff new CMF EV setup, uh, notable here because it mounts the drive motor at the front. Rival VW Group EVs from Volkswagen, Cupra and Skoda sit at the back. Now theoretically, this Renault chassis could also support an all-wheel drive EV setup with the motor on both axles and does in top E-Force uh, versions of its Nissan Ariya close cousin, but that'll have to wait for a future Renault Spore style Alpine badged performance version of this car. For now, the single provided motor's 216 brake horsepower output will be ample for this Renault. It's the highest in the segment, and to be honest, it's right on the edge of what the front wheels here can cope with in extremis, as you'll find on slippery surfaces uh, during particularly frenetic cornering or when you're throwing out the anchors away from rest. 
do that with the most urgent of the provided MySense drive modes, Sport engaged, and 62 miles an hour can be dispatched in 7.5 seconds on the way to the usual modestly limited EV top speed, uh, here pegged at just 99 miles an hour. Still, when was the last time you actually drove at 99 miles an hour? You'll need to use this steering wheel button to quickly switch away from that red themed setting if you're not to have impending issues with drive range. That's officially rated at 280 miles, but in reality, it's nowhere near that. Uh, more on this in our cost section. Uh, the less frantic modes are blue themed comfort, uh, turquoise themed perso, and green themed eco. Each differently configures the steering and throttle response, as well as climate output, uh, cabin lighting, and interior colors. Uh, a few more selectable settings are provided via these steering wheel paddle shifters. Uh, they offer four regenerative braking levels. The most urgent of these slows the car considerably off throttle, although not quite to the same extent as the e-pedal setup on that Nissan Ariya Cousin model. As on other EVs fitted with this feature, uh, paddle selecting heavy regen works well on corner entry at speed. It's a bit like shifting down a gear in a combustion model. And you might be tempted occasionally to throw range worries to the wind and drive your Megane Electric like that uh, because it feels a pleasingly urgent companion when it's stretched a bit with well-controlled body roll and, as promised, a sharp steering rack, although not ultimately a particularly feelsome one. Nevertheless, this Renault is rivaled in class only by the Cupra born in terms of driver engagement, and that's welcome in a segment where otherwise the drive dynamics tend to be about as pleasurable for an enthusiastic driver as a weekend spent creosoting your mother-in-law's fence. We're not blind, of course, to the fact that the overwhelming majority of customers in this class won't be driving enthusiasts, and for them, uh, refinement and ride quality will be of much greater import than driving on your door handles. Uh, there is a big tick here for that first issue. Uh, the Megane Electric is extremely quiet. All EVs are, of course, but in too many cases, all the absence of powertrain din does is emphasize uh, things like wind noise and tire roar. Uh, try a Tesla and you'll see exactly what we mean. Uh, there's very little of that here, thanks mainly to the so-called cocoon effect technology, which sees a layer of sound-absorbing lightweight foam pressed in between the car's floor and across the whole battery. That creates what Renault calls a sound cocoon at speed. Uh, it's the sort of thing that's usually only found on premium saloon models. You won't be expecting this car to ride like a premium saloon model and we had particularly low expectations in this particular case having recently tested that similarly engineered Nissan Ariya model that we mentioned earlier on. Uh, that car we found rode fine until it was challenged by really poor surfaces or speed humps at which point it became as tarmac troubled as quite a few of its segment rivals. Uh, fitted out with even larger 20 inch wheels uh, we feared this Megane and might be damped even more poorly. But as it turns out, uh, the multi-link rear suspension package here seems to have been tuned really rather better, aided no doubt by the uh, optimized curb weight that we mentioned earlier on, 1,636 kilos. Although it's still clumpy for an ordinary family hatch, it's feather light by EV standards. You do certainly feel roadway tears and undulations, but not to such a bothersome extent. And we have little doubt that if we'd elected to test a base trimmed Equilibra variant with smaller 18 inch alloy rims, uh, things might have been slightly better still. Talking of base trim, Renault were telling us uh, that at the time of this test, uh, our market wouldn't be offered the alternative entry-level EV40 version of this model, which uses a modest 129 brake horsepower electric motor powered by a smaller 40 kilowatt hour battery and that's uh, capable of just 186 miles. And that's probably just as well given the range concerns we referenced earlier on. Apart from concerns on that, we've been pleasantly surprised by what the brand served up here. Driven by its so-called Renolution strategy, the Gallic Mark has reinvented itself with this car, and in doing so, it's reinvented what your perception of the company might be going forward. In short, it's a very promising start to a very different era, and Renault really needs it to be.
Looks good, doesn't it? Now, apparently what we have here, uh, based visually on the Megane E-Vision concept car unveiled in 2020, was originally going to be the performance version of this car, but designer Lawrence van der Acker found that everyone liked it so much that he decided to standardize the look across the whole Megane E-Tech electric range. The so-called sensual tech design looks especially striking from the side, where you particularly notice the high belt line, the narrow glass house, the super short overhangs, and the almost coupe-like swept back silhouette. Uh, protective black finishing for the lower body and the wheel arches provides the apparently necessary crossover cues, and Renault continues its recent theme of adding almost impossibly large wheel rims to its compact family cars, a big 20 20 inches here with 18 inch alloys fitted at base level. Uh, most will want this contrast coloured roof in grey or is here in black. Flush door handles add a finishing touch and there's a branded charging flap on the near side front wing here. The front delivers a rather more confident look than you might expect from a manufacturer with such a dismal recent European sales record. Uh, the brand's latest Nouvelle R logo centrally positioned where other rivals only have an apologetic plastic panel to replace the unnecessary front grille. Avoid base trim and the thin, finely laser cut adaptive projector headlights will be of the LED pure vision sort. They're made using six reflective panels and they're underscored by daytime running light strips which continue down uh, into the lower air intake. Oh, and the windscreen incorporates a little rooster badge to symbolize the car's French origin. The light show continues at the rear where numerous uh, laser cut micro optic fibers laid in crisscrossing lines create an intriguing 3D like shimmer effect. In addition to the elegant indicators, the brake lights are displayed in two clear lines, much like a pause sign. Uh, most models get this shark fin antenna and a subtle roof spoiler uh, rounds things off. But of course, as usual, what's more important is what you can't see. The CMF EV modular platform that this car shares with its close cousin, the slightly larger Nissan Ariya. That competes in the class above, of course. Uh, this chassis has been purpose designed to incorporate the thinnest drive battery on the market, yet it's 20% denser than the one used in the brand's smaller Zoe EV. Innovation then is the theme dominating the exterior design and engineering of the car, but will it also characterize the cabin? Well, it seems likely as you approach the car and the door handles uh, spring out automatically to meet you. If you have the LED pure vision headlamps, then there'll be a little light show too, with a flash of the beams as the lower daytime running lights, strobe lights illuminate dimly and then more brightly. Sure enough, once you've slammed the aluminium door, you'll find it's all very digitech and on trend. Runner claims inspiration here from the world of home furniture with cozy upholstering and lots of different recycled surfaces surrounding the glossy screens. As intended, it does indeed make the cabins and rivals like uh, Kia's Nero EV and the Volkswagen ID3 look rather yesterday. Uh, you would struggle though to identify an overriding interior styling theme. It's rather like uh, uh, several different designers all came at it with different ideas and couldn't agree on a single approach. And unlike uh, in this model's Nissan Ariya cousin, Lawrence van den Acker and his project colleagues haven't used the opportunity given them by the new CMF EV architecture to produce an airy open plan floor beneath the dash ahead of the seats. Instead, an enormous center storage console makes it feel like a transmission tunnel still slides like a spine at the center of the car. Another touch of convention in amongst all the screen tech lies with haptic looking steering wheel switches which actually turn out to be proper buttons. Uh, the wheel itself is a curiously shaped device. It gets a sporty lower round mode button and it's rather overburdened with three stalks on the right hand side. One of them is a Mercedes style uh, gear shifter for the single speed transmission. Uh, the seats part trimmed on most models with double yellow stitched synthetic leather upholstery are extremely comfortable, but they don't seat you in any way commandingly, which will be either off-putting or welcome, uh, depending on whether you view this as a crossover or a sporty hatch. 
We mentioned the Enviro-conscious materials. Uh, most of the soft stuff is 100% recycling sourced, and this uh, fabric upper dash panel is fashioned from recycled plastic bottles. What Renault wants to talk most about here, though, is what it calls this cabin's crowning jewel, this open R single screen, which combines the digital instrument panel and the central console multimedia monitor into one long reinforced glass panel, enhanced with anti-reflection coating, so it doesn't need a hood above the drive dials. This looked very futuristic when we first saw it on three Renault concept cars, which appeared between 2017 and 2019, the Trezor, the Symbios, and the Morphos, but fast forward to 2023, and the single double display screen panel approach has become so familiar on newly designed cars that it's almost expected. Uh, the only real difference here is that angled vents have been inserted either side of the 12.3 inch virtual instrument display and that the central monitor uh, at nine inches in size isn't particularly big by modern standards. Uh, other markets get it in a larger 12.3 inch form, which probably will eventually appear here. A view button on this flattened off steering wheel lets you toggle through the various different layouts uh, that are provided for the gauge display ahead of you. Uh, being nearly three times the size of the screen that's provided on VW Group models uh, in this same segment, it's able to show full width mapping with info boxes at either edge of the screen. An alternative Zen layout removes the mapping, or there's this default driving layout with twin dials, a speedo on the left, and a power and charge meter on the right. Uh, whatever your setup choice, more steering wheel buttons will allow you to scroll through all the different informational options for what you view on the right hand side, uh, either an eco monitor, tire pressures, trip data, energy consumption, power percentages, and audio selection. Anything else you'll need will of course be found on the central screen, which claims to deliver a new level of media connectivity for this class of car. Uh, Renault's previous efforts in this area weren't really cutting it, so the brand has instead adopted an Android automotive system uh, that was developed with Google. Uh, if, like 75% of the world, you have an Android handset, uh, that means that your smartphone will automatically link into it whenever you get into the car, and that's without you having to do anything. Uh, Apple folk can connect in wirelessly. Uh, this central screen will be periodically updated over the air, and you'll get direct access to helpful apps and services like Google Maps and Google Play. Plus, you can link into your Google account, and there's a uh, Google Assistant voice control. As with a smartphone, you'll need a 4G bundle with data to access a lot of the functions, an initial subscription for which comes with the car. Uh, the downside with that, of course, is that if you're going somewhere which is unfamiliar in an outlying area and you lose 4G data coverage without having previously downloaded your destination as an offline map, you'll end up quickly lost and lacking the voice assistant too. Uh, for that reason, we'd still prefer a built-in sat-nav system, but, uh, well, hey, this is the future, right? That's certainly suggested by all the various shortcut media options which run along the top of the screen. Uh, plus there's a left-hand car segment which includes your EV features, an air quality section and driving assistance stuff. Climate options run along the monitor's bottom edge, uh, just above a row of physical ventilation buttons provided as a SOP to technophobes like us. Below that is this enormous and rather over-prominent smartphone tray, although unless you avoid base trim, this won't incorporate a charging mat to power your handset. And then below that, the enormous stowage lower console we referenced earlier. To be fair, it's a very useful addition, uh, compartmentalized with these two silvered dividers, which if removed, would then leave enough space for something as big as a large handbag. Uh, you only get one cup holder built into this though, which could lead to uh, some arguments at Starbucks, unless you're able to uh, conjure up something temporary with those dividers or somehow jam the second beverage mug into this deep lidded box between the seats here. Uh, that has a shallow and fairly useless tray ahead of it, which incorporates a couple of hidden USB-C ports. Uh, the glove box, that's not as big as it looks, and an overhead sunglasses compartment is missing. But the door pockets are deep enough to take a big bottle, and there are ticket clips in the sun visors. 
all-round visibility might be something you'll have to adapt to a bit. Uh, the front A-pillars taper outwards at the base, which isn't ideal at junctions, but the main issues lie when viewing over your shoulder at the side and rear. Inevitably so, given that uh, narrow glass area, the letterbox-shaped rear screen, and the considerable rear C-pillars. As a result, we'd say that the blind spot monitoring system that you only get from this mid-range trim level upwards is near essential at least rear parking sensors and a rather small screened rear view camera have been standardized. Uh, what else? Uh, well, this, uh, all this soft furnishing it seems nice, but it remains to be seen how they'll cope with the uh, scrapes and stains of family life. Build quality, well, uh, it hasn't traditionally been much of a Renault strong point, but it isn't amazing these days from rival VW Group EVs either, as their makers try to cut corners to compensate for ever pricier drive systems. Jump out of an ID3, a Cupra Born, or an Enyaq into one of these, and you should be relatively satisfied at the way that the new electricity plant in northern France has screwed it all together. Uh, whether you'll be just as satisfied several years into ownership, well, that remains to be seen. Right, time to take a seat rearwards. Now, you might expect the kind of money required here to get you a slightly larger car than this. At just 4,210 mils in length, this Renault is easily the shortest contender in the segment, 51 millimeters shorter than the Volkswagen ID3 and a massive 210 mils shorter than the segment sales leading Kia Nero EV. But nothing in this class is particularly spacious in the back. Uh, for that, you'll need something uh, Volkswagen ID4 or Kia EV6 sized in the class above, or indeed this Megane's Nissan Ariya cousin. Let's take a look inside. Operating the upper door catches hidden in the C-pillar will have clued you into the fact that the designers here were aiming for a coupe-like feel, which is fine for impressing people at the gym, but not so good for those who have to be confined back here for more than short periods. Uh, the C-pillars are wide, the window line high, the upholstery is dark, and the rear window glass is usually privacy tinted. Plus, unlike in this model's Nissan Ariya cousin, you can't specify the panoramic glass roof to lighten the gloom, although perhaps that's just as well, given a relatively restricted ceiling height that won't please lofty folk. None of this is a recipe for a light, airy cabin. Of course, you don't get it. Uh, legroom, which is 685 millimeters in length, uh, that's not as generous as you might expect from a full battery model with a dedicated EV platform either. A rival Volkswagen ID3 has a wheelbase length 85 mils longer, and if you're looking for extra room for your knees, that really shows. Nor is there much space for sliding your feet under the seat ahead. Still, at least uh, there's the expected completely flat floor, which ought to mean that you could more easily fit a third person in the middle. However, because the cabin is narrower than rivals, 29 millimeters narrower from door to door than an ID3 and 40 millimeters narrower than a Kia Nero EV, cramming an extra adult in here would still be something of a challenge. There are some pluses here though. The chunky centrally mounted underfloor batteries fitted to many EVs these days require a slightly raised floor and that means that backseat folk in those cars often have to sit with their knees slightly raised towards their waist and that can get a bit uncomfortable on longer trips. The much thinner LG battery used here alleviates that problem which uh, combined with a combustion conventional 27 degrees of rear backrest angle means that sitting in the back of an EV Megane feels very much like it did in a fossil fuel powered one. Uh, there's no opportunity to slide or recline this bench and Renault doesn't provide a central armrest and that means backseat folk have to do without cup holders. But they are supplied with twin USB-C ports, seat back pockets, uh, reasonably sized flock lined door bins, coat hooks in the grab handles and dinky little circular overhead reading lights. Even on full battery models with dedicated EV platforms, it's not usual to find extra front storage in the space under the bonnet, which supposedly ought to be freed up in an electric vehicle. Certainly isn't here. Uh, the front mounted motor fights for space with climate system packaging. 
which means that anything of any size you need to carry has to go where you'd expect it to, back here in the boot. Uh, now, powered tailgates are often dismissed as a rather pointless invention, but you'd be thankful for one here because without it, you have to press uh, this inevitably filth-covered little button to access the manual-only tailgate. It rises to reveal a larger space than the short rear overhangs lead you to expect, 440 litres, although it's a bit uh, odd-shaped with most of its capacity coming from its depth rather than its height. Plus, there's a high loading lip too. Still, the numbers don't lie. Despite the dimensional restrictions that we referred to, this Megane's trunk has 960 mils of width and 760 millimeters of length, so it delivers 55 liters more than a Volkswagen ID3 or a Cupra Born and offers a huge 77 liters more than an MG4 EV. As a result, it gets closer than we expected it would to the boxier Kia Nero EVs 475 litre total, which means up to seven carry-on cases will fit in. You'd manage to fit six in the ID3 and five in the MG4. And that's without using this uh, helpful cubby beneath the floor, which can therefore be kept for the carriage of charging cables. You get four tie-down rings and two bag hooks, but there's no 12-volt socket back here. And more seriously, Renault doesn't offer a ski hatch, which you can get on the ID3 and the Bourne, or a convenient 40-20-40 rear seat back split, so you won't be able to slide in longer items like skis between two rear seated folk. Uh, you can add a boot organizer and a protective cargo area covering, and although folding down the 60-40 split rear bench doesn't deliver a particularly flat cargo area, the 1,332 litre size should easily be enough for the needs of most owners. At the time of this test in early 2023, pricing here started from around £37,000 for a base Equilibra version, with this mid-range Techno variant pitched at around £40,000 and the top Iconic derivative up at around £42,000. Not long ago, that kind of outlay would have got you an upper mid-sized EV like a Tesla Model 3, a Volkswagen ID4, or this Renault's close cousin, the Nissan Ariya. Now, as we'll see shortly, it's merely typical of smaller family hatch mid-sized EV models against which this Megane competes, like the Volkswagen ID3 and the Nissan Leaf. Only the larger battery 60 kilowatt hour EV60 version of this Renault is going to be offered here. Elsewhere, the French maker does offer a 40 kilowatt hour version, but the range with that is pretty feeble. Uh, the CMF EV platform will accommodate a dual motor, all wheel drive powertrain, but it's merely front driven here. That chassis will at some point probably appear on a new generation version of what until recently was the segment sales leader, this Megane's Nissan Renault Alliance cousin, the Nissan Leaf. But as we filmed, that was a way off and the top 59 kilowatt hour E plus version of the current Leaf is an obvious potential competitor at a 2000 pound saving over this Renault. If you don't mind the fact that the Leaf's 239 mile driving range is 41 miles off the claim figure for this Megane. Most potential customers here though are going to be considering a rival family hatch sized EV in this class from one of three conglomerates, the VW Group, the Hyundai Motor Group or Stellantis. So let's brief you on those. Uh, now the most obvious VW Group offering here in this class is the Volkswagen ID3, but that is quite pricey. It costs from around £40,000 in comparable 58 kilowatt hour, 204 PS form. And it's got a lower official driving range than this Renault. Uh, the same powertrain deficiency applies to the Volkswagen's clone, the Cupra Born, but in the same 58 kilowatt hour, 204 PS form, the Born costs about the same as this Renault, and it also shares this Megane's sporty vibe. It is arguably the closest segment match to what's on offer here. The VW Group's other potential offering, the Skoda Enyaq IV, is anything but sporty. It's a bigger, heavier car. But if you're willing to forgo sportiness for extra space, then the Enyaq in 62 kilowatt hour IV 60 form at around £39,000 could figure in your thinking here. 
This Renault's other key segment rivals come from the Korean Hyundai Motor Group. Uh, the Kia Nero EV is the segment sales leader and it matches this Megane on price and range, but it has a much less sporty, modern vibe in its mainstream forms. Uh, you could say much the same of the identically engineered Hyundai Kona Electric, which in comparable 64 kilowatt hour form costs fractionally more, but it also offers the longest range figure in the segment at 300 miles. We can't really see why you'd choose the Stellantis Group's contenders in the segment, uh, the Peugeot E308 and the Vauxhall Astra Electric. Neither will save you very much over this Megane, but each serves up a drive motor with about 30% less power and a 54 kilowatt hour battery with an official range figure, which is over 20 miles less. Uh, the Citroen EC4 is even less tempting with a feeble 134 horsepower motor and a limited 217 mile range from a 50 kilowatt what our battery, although it is quite cheap at around £32,000. If you want cheap though in this segment, we'd point you towards the MG4 EV, which in long range 64 kilowatt hour form really is a very creditable rival to this Renault, although it is fractionally smaller uh, with a touch less power. It's priced from just £30,000 though, which in our view means you really have to include it on your shopping list if you are perusing between the various offerings in this sector. If we haven't mentioned yet the alternative compact TV you're thinking of, uh, it's probably because it's either a smaller car like the Mazda MX-30 or the Mini Electric, uh, those are models which compete against Renault's smaller EV, the Zoe, or because the EV that you have in mind is a pricier, larger one like the Volkswagen ID.4 or the Toyota BZ4X. Those are models which compete against this Megane's slightly larger Nissan Ariya close cousin. Feel free, of course, to widen your search if you need to, but there will be compromises in either cabin space or in your budget if you're gonna do that. If having considered all this, you conclude it is this Megane that you really, really want, then you're gonna to need to know exactly how generous Renault has been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that right now. All versions of this Renault come with auto headlamps and wipers, rear parking sensors, keyless entry, and cruise control with a smart speed limiter, plus a very complete portfolio of camera safety kit, which we'll be briefing you on shortly. Uh, inside, with all variants, you'll get heat for the front seats and steering wheel, plus a rear view camera, a fabric upper dashboard covering, and also a leather steering wheel with uh, regenerative braking paddle shift levers. But this model's uh, main signature interior touch is the Open R single screen, which combines a 12.3 inch instrument display with a nine inch multimedia central monitor. Uh, the latter infotainment screen offers wireless smartphone replication for Android phones and integration via iOS, CarPlay and Google. Plus over the air updates, voice recognition, in-car Wi-Fi and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Remote services operable via a provided app are included too, of course. Uh, this one is called My Reno, and it offers all the usual remote features like activation of the lights and the horn to help you to locate your Megane in a crowded car park. In addition, it includes a range of EV specific functions, a remaining battery display and display of charging stations in the vicinity, plus menus for remotely activating the cabin's climate control system and setting charging time. Times. On the subject of charging, uh, annoyingly, Renault is one of those brands that charges you extra, £245 no less, for the essential charging cable you'll need to plug into a domestic socket. Only the 5 meter Mode 3 charging cable that you'll need for wall boxes and public charging points comes as standard. On to the specific features that mark out the three different trim levels. Uh, base Equilibre variants don't get LED headlamp beams and they're also identifiable by their smaller 18-inch Austin wheels, while inside there's a four-speaker Archimus audio system and an eight-color ambient lighting setup. The black fabric top upholstery with base spec is 100% recycled. This uh, mid-range techno version though is probably the variant you're going to want uh, because only from this level do you get the extra visual touches which really set this car apart. The huge 
20 inch alloy wheels here in Soren style are the option of this contrast coloured roof and the hardware to create the Renault's light show theatrics pure vision full LED adaptive headlamps paired with LED front and rear fog lights and moirage front and rear signature lighting. Techno trim also gains a shark fin antenna, tinted rear windows, black wing mirrors, front parking sensors and automatic cruise control. Inside you get seats upholstered in a combination of marble grey fabric and black synthetic leather plus two zone automatic climate control with a humidity sensor and air recycling. Uh, the 9 inch multimedia open R central screen gains navigation and Google assisted services like Google Assistant, Google Maps and Google Play Store. Plus, at this level, you also get a wireless phone charger, a frameless auto dimming rear view mirror, and an upgraded classic six speaker version of the Archimist audio system. With the top iconic model of the same spec also features, but Renault also throw in a heat pump, which preserves driving range in really low temperatures. On to options. Uh, for the boot, there's a waterproof, non-slip, easy flex protection covering which adapts to the position of the rear seats and you can add a modular boot organiser and double flooring for easier cable storage. Plus there's also a cable bag available. Uh, for the cabin, uh, there are door sills in stainless steel or you can have them illuminated and you can add uh, various types of textile floor mat. You can also add a removable tow bar and if you do that, you'll be able to add a rack for three bikes to fit on it. Uh, roof crossbars will allow you to fit a roof box or carriers for skis, wakeboards and snowboards and you can also add a roof customization sticker. As usual you'll almost certainly have to pay your Renault dealer more for your choice of paint colour and that's because the only standard shade available here is solid glacier white. Beyond that there are a range of metallic options like the uh, ceramic grey that we have here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, as long as you avoid base trim, you'll also be offered the option of a contrast coloured roof in either shadow grey or as here in diamond black. Enough with that, on to safety kit. As you'd expect, there's an automatic emergency braking system. Uh, this one's able to identify pedestrians and cyclists, and it includes a junction assist feature, which also automatically brakes the car if you're about to hit oncoming traffic at intersections. An emergency lane keep assist system combines data from the front camera and the side radar to sense solid lines on the tarmac, oncoming traffic, and road edges. And there's traffic sign recognition, driver drowsiness alert and distance warning alert which keeps you a safe distance behind the vehicle ahead. Plus there are the usual airbags, hill start assist and electronic assistance for braking and traction. Avoid the base model and you get a bit more. Automatic high beam for the headlights, a lane centering system built into the adaptive cruise control setup and rear cross traffic alert, which warns you of oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a space and if necessary, will break the car to avoid them. Uh, there is also blind spot recognition and that warns you of vehicles in your blind spot with braking intervention if you ignore the warnings given. As well as developing technology to avoid an accident, Renault has also given some thought to dealing with post-accident trauma. Uh, the brand's liaised with French firefighters to add a special fireman access point uh, to this car for rescue teams to utilise when they're trying to quickly douse a battery fire, uh, meaning they'll be able to quench the flames in just five minutes as opposed to the one to three hour period that it used to take. In addition, a switch located under the rear bench allows rescue teams to disconnect the battery from the vehicle and a QR code is fixed to the windscreen uh, which rescue teams can quickly scan following an accident and quickly recognise that this is an EV. Uh, this code will give them access to the car's structural information, uh, for example the location of the battery and the airbags along with places for quick and risk-free cutting. It's all really good to know. Renault claims that this car's 60 kilowatt hour battery will deliver 280 miles between charges. 
realistic? Well, no one familiar with the current automotive four battery revolution seriously expects an EV to completely meet its published WLTP or even worse, EAER rated drive range figures in real world driving. Uh, we've usually found that about 80% in each case is probably more realistic. A little worryingly though, we've not yet come across anyone who's managed to get even that level of range out of a Megane E-Tech Electric and we've certainly struggled to do that ourselves during this test. We can't help wondering whether this has something to do with the innovative design of the battery that's in use here. Uh, though it's 20% denser than the one that they use in the brand smaller Zoe EV, it's 40% smaller and at just 395 kilos it's considerably lighter. In order to achieve this, Renault's battery supplier LG had to add more nickel and less cobalt to the pouch cells, uh, 12 modules of 24 cells each spread over two layers, plus it was necessary to develop a completely new liquid cooling system. Uh, whether any of this might affect the battery's real world ability to hold its charge is a question that we're of course not qualified to answer, but you wouldn't have thought that this power pack status as by far the thinnest on the market would help it in that regard. Nor does Renault's decision to offer a standard heat pump on any variant of this car but the priciest iconic variant. Uh, that fitment preserves range in colder conditions. If you were previously considering a VW Group or a Stellantis Group marketed EV design in the segment, uh, the mileage issue might not matter overly much because all the rivals that are produced by those two conglomerates uh, think of comparable versions of the Volkswagen ID3, the Cupra Born, uh, Vauxhall's Astra Electric and the Peugeot E308 are 15 to 20 miles down on this Renault's range figure to start with. But a bit of a real world range gap would open up if you expanded your market search to include key strong selling Hyundai Motor Group contenders. Uh, here I'm talking about the Kia Nero EV and the Hyundai Kona Electric. Uh, those two not only shade this Renault's range to start with, uh, they're respectively rated at 285 miles and 300 miles, but also in our experience, they get a bit closer to those quoted figures in test conditions. As does another worthy rival that we tried not long ago, uh, the MG4 EV. Uh, that's rated in long range form at 281 miles. Renault of course seem to have made this car go further between charges than anyone else. Uh, the brand boasts that a journey between uh, London and Newcastle, Paris and Lyon, uh, Hanover and Copenhagen or Munich and Venice could be accomplished with just a single short 30 minute charging stop. That's assuming of course that the uh, battery replenishment in question is sourced from a rapid point which will allow this car to DC charge at up to its 130 kilowatt maximum. At a station like that, uh, prior to arrival, uh, the car can optimize itself for a fast charge by lowering the temperature of the battery. Uh, then a 15 to 80% charge can indeed be completed in half an hour and that's a stat that we can confirm. A more common 22 kilowatt three phase charging point will require three hours and 15 minutes or six hours 15 minutes with an 11 kilowatt charging point. Both times are there are from empty to completely full. Uh, the Google Maps feature in the Open R Link central screen has a specific electric route planner function which plans an optimal route for long journeys and that automatically integrates charging stations. Uh, should the set destination be one for which the battery level here is insufficient then the system will automatically propose a selection of available and compatible charging points along the route and it'll suggest the best way of arriving as soon as possible. Uh, during that journey it will update automatically uh, according to the vehicle's actual energy use and it will also warn the driver if the planned route needs to be changed uh, for example if a charging station is out of action. Back at home, from empty to full, a single phase 7.4 kilowatt uh, garage wall box will need 9 hours 15 minutes, uh, fine for overnight in other words. Try to power from a 2.3 kilowatt domestic socket and of course your Megane Electric will be off the road for an awfully long time, uh, 30 and a half hours to be exact. 
You can set charging times and you can precondition the cabin climate prior to arrival, either via the provided MyRano app or, of course, from the car's central screen, uh, the electric section of the car segment to be precise. And that also has an energy monitor so you can see at any time what's being powered by what. There's also what's called consumption dynamic monitoring, so you can keep a close eye on any meaningful attempts at frugality. Uh, we've been achieving around 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour throughout this test, uh, although only when we've constantly engaged the Eco MySense drive mode and the most urgent of those four provided paddle shift brake regeneration setups. Uh, you will always have the transmission column shifter in D because, uh, strangely enough, Enough, there's no B maximum regen setting. Like all EVs, you'll be benefiting kind tax rated at just 2% based on this full battery model's supposed zero emission status, which of course, unless you're drawing from a solar power, is a tag that no EV can ever really justify. The coal-fired energy generation environmental cost of the electricity that this model's Nissan Ariya design stablemate consumes is CO2 rated at around 31 grams per kilometer, and we wouldn't expect this Renault to be that much better. What else? Uh, well, as with every EV, you'll be free of congestion charging and road tax, but only until 2025. Uh, predicted residual values are quite encouraging. As with the Aria, a 57% forecast over three years and 36,000 miles for a techno version like this one. Uh, that's an improvement on what you'd get from a Citroen EC4, but similar to the returns of the class sales leader, the Kia Nero EV. The warranty is a five-year, 60,000-mile affair, which is uh, behind the seven-year coverage package, which is offered by Kia in this segment, but is at the same level as that offered by Hyundai. The battery of this Megane is covered by a separate eight-year, 100,000-mile policy, during which you'll get a replacement battery if the original one deteriorates to less than 70% of its capacity. Servicing is every year or 18,000 miles, whichever comes first, so you'll save a bit on that compared to a combustion engine model. And Renault offers an easy life service plan, and that can be had with either a three year 30,000 or a four year 40,000 mile package. And what you gain in lower servicing charges, though, you will probably lose again when it comes to insurance costs. Uh, brokers are still terrified of the heavy collision potential accident costs of EVs and the Megan E-Tech Electric is rated at group 26 or 27 depending on trim. Uh, to give us some segment perspective that's a fraction less than you'd pay to ensure a rival MG4 EV. And finally, this car boasts all the usual trendy environmental credentials. All the upholstery is made of 100% recycled materials, up to 2.2 kilos of them, uh, depending on the version that you have. A total of 27.2 kilos of visible or invisible parts are made out of recycled plastics, and 95% of the vehicle will be recycled at the end of its life. Uh, moreover, the synchronous drive motor is of the permanently excited sort. Uh, which doesn't require rare earth metals. It's indisputable that Renault set off too early with full electric vehicle development, trying to sell the market cars it wasn't ready for and hemorrhaging money in the process, which is why it's taken so long for a second mainstream EV model to appear from the brand. We reckon though that this Megane E-Tech Electric was well worth the wait. It looks and feels more sophisticated and stylish than its VW Group and Korean class rivals. Certainly if you want an ID3, a Kia Nero EV or a Nissan Leaf class EV hatch, then this one really has to be somewhere on your shopping list. To some extent, the visual pizzazz and sporty vibe translates into quite an engaging drive experience too. Plus there's a very avant-garde cabin. But other rivals are more spacious, and in our experience, all of them get closer to their quoted range mileage than this Renault does. For all that though, we can't help liking this Megane. 
Its maker has long, rather unwisely, depended largely on a single model line to sustain itself, the Clio in this century's first decade and the Capture in the one after that. But this EV, together with the models that are going to be developed from it, represent a far more solid foundation for the brand. At a stroke, for the first time in a long time, the Megane E-Tech Electric makes Renault seem a more credible force in the mainstream European market. And we're really quite intrigued by the thought of just how good a future high-performance Renault Spore-style Alpine-badged version might be. For the time being, though, what we've got is a car that signals Renault right back on track.